I'm Micah Khan. I'm a filmmaker who's collaborating with Movie Maker Magazine on a series on directing and visual storytelling. You can check out some of my videos on Knives Out and Pride and Prejudice. I wanted to talk to Spike Lee about the amazing visuals of his new film on Netflix, The Five Bloods, and the decisions I assumed he made. But what he told me is sometimes movie making isn't about plotting everything out, so much as accepting gifts. Gifts you only get when you're ready to accept them. So here's my conversation with Spike Lee where we talk about rules, how to break them, blessings, and happenstance. So this series I'm doing is really about intent behind shots, right? Like the decisions that go into make, in directing. Um, so I want to start with your use of color in lighting, production design, and costume. Um, I kind of made assumptions, but I would love to hear what you were trying to oh, do. Oh, with... don't use that word. What? Assumptions? Oh. <laughs> Tell my students, my NYU grad film students, they should take that word out of their vocabulary. I analyzed your film and I came to this conclusion. I assume you're going to bring the camera. I assume you're going to bring the film. So here's what I analyzed and what I thought. Um, that green was the unresolved or the past because you really bring in green uh, in that dinner scene with the, with the bloods when that kid walks in with the, with the leg. So I, I started to really take the color green as the past or something unresolved. The red, red, obviously, like for the blood, the brotherhood, and then yellow as the future or moving forward. Like, I would love to hear your thoughts on like what you were trying to do with your color design. No disrespect to what you just said, but that was not in my intention. But again, Great. that's what, what you said is valid. What you said is valid. In your mom, you saw the film, but that necessarily wasn't what we were doing. Great. Uh, yeah. And I also like to state that anytime you're talking about the look of a film, mm -hmm. it's not the director, it's not just me, it was Tom Siegel, mm -hmm. the cinematographer, Wynn Thomas, production designer, and Donna Burrick. All my films, we sit down and we discuss at length what the look of the film should be. When you guys were talking, did you come to the conclusion of using these colors this way or like not at all, just having fun with it? No, we felt was appropriate, but it wasn't as as it wasn't as, as regimentated as mm -hmm. as you said. I mean, we're shooting in a large part of the film was shot in the jungles of Thailand. Mm -hmm. it's, green. it's green. It's green. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I assumed because it was like the jungle, you know? It's oh, like, use that word again. Ah, sorry. But again, I like to state that what you interpreted is your ideal, so it doesn't invalidate what you said. Mm -hmm. I want to make that clear. Yeah, well, I, it's, this is the kind of stuff that I really want to hear. Like, And I ah, think that, that a lot of people on the no budget, like where I am as a filmmaker, yeah. Need to know these kind of things, like you know, especially what you just said. It's like this is what I tell people all the time: is like it's a collaboration. You have to be communicating with people. It's not, yeah. but the, at the end of the day, the director has to decide. Like this is what we're gonna do. I like this idea. Let's go with that. You know. Yes, so, the director should be the conductor. We all gotta be reading from the same piece of music. Ah, yeah. you like that one, huh? I did. I love that, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it, quote that after I'm done it, here. You know, and, and, and on this film, I mean, my films. I'm the conductor, so I'm Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> Bernstein, yeah. Leonard Bernstein. And you know, the flute section, the horn section, percussion, woodwinds, we gotta be uh, reading the same music. That's a, that's an amazing way of putting it. So let's let's talk about um, Paul's monologue, which I really loved. And this is something you've done before in like 25th hour and like do the right thing. How do you go about deciding that you wanna play something to the camera? Like where, like, cause this, this script came to you, right? Right. I never was hesitant to break the fourth wall. I mean, I would tell my students even today. And when you grad film that be, be leery of people tell you about these rules, center rules, things you can't do. Be very leery of that stuff. So if you are dedicated to your craft and you study cinema day in, day out, you will come to 
the thinking that really are no rules, that what works for somebody might not work for somebody else, or those particular things. So I learned very early on that rules, you know, don't, 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 don't get too crazy. I did not want to put artistic handcuffs on myself because of so-called rules. What, what were, like, what lens did you end up choosing, like, to film it on? And, like, why did you decide that lens? Well, the lens is a very particular thing that the director has to have with Mm -hmm. the DP. And for the most time, the lens that my DPs put up on the camera, I agree with. I'm looking at the monitor. And if they're slight things, I'm going to say, you know, wider or tighter. But it's, it's not a big thing. I've never had a, a problem with like a, a, a big discussion about the lens while we're shooting. We work that stuff. A lot of the problems that arise that, 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 that show the ugly heads on the set happen because shit wasn't worked on or discussed in pre in motherfucking pre production. You gotta nip that shit in the bud. When you're in the middle of a shoot, you can't stop the shoot, especially on the clock, to have some motherfucking philosophical discussion and the whole crew is watching you. That stuff has to be worked out in pre-production. It's a lifesaver. How did you go about like designing the shot for that monologue? Well, first, I understood that his character is a tortured human being. He's been through a lot. His mind is not right. And sometimes when your mind is not right, you talk out loud to yourself. In this case, we always felt that when he was talking to camera, he was talking to the audience directly. I also got to bring up, like, um, when Paul sees Norman, right, that shot where, like, he, right at the end of his monologue, he sees no- Norman, I don't know if this is intentional, um, and I'm not going to say the other A word, but um, you you shot it with a gold light with fog in the background. Was that intentional? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. There was slight smoke machine. Mm-hmm. But that gold, what what'd you say, a gold, a gold light? Yeah, like a golden halo around him. Like, a, know, like a backlight. My brother, that was God's heavenly light shining down on our brother. I know. That was God's heavenly glow coming down from the heavens on Chadwick. That's one that of the was, best shots was, I've ever had seen. A little fill light, but the fill light was on Delroy. Paul has his monologue into the camera saying, God woke his black ass up. He continues. Then we see Paul's eyes move like he sees something. The camera leaves Paul, goes up in the sky, through the leaves, and it comes down, descend, let me use the word, it descends upon Chadwick in almost like this Greek statue pose. I want you to understand this. That was God's light. So it was God's intent. Yes. God was given a blessing on Chadwick and to that scene. And that's amazing, man. That like glow, that, 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 that whole that shot. Was not lit. That golden glow you talk about was from the heavens. When you pan to uh Norman or Chadwick, the leaves are green. But when you come back, they're they start to wilt or they start start to turn orange yellowish. And there's one like tiny frame of a wilted leaf in Norman's frame. Is that something you like that you were foreshadowing? Like what was going to happen literally right after he's digging his own grave? Or is it just like symbolism for life and death? My brother, that was mother nature. We had nothing to do with those leaves. Really? Even the red and like red and yellow ones? It's God's light. You know, leaves have different shades and colors. And we had nothing to do with that. That was not, we did not cheat. In the DI, that was from above. 
<laughs> that's that's amazing, man. That's uh, <laughs> kind of threw all my questions out. <laughs> This is this is what this is my problem. I came in here assuming. But here's the thing, though. When you get gifts like that, mm -hmm. when you're blessed like that, I don't question it. There's greater stuff than us. There's yeah. greater things than human beings. I don't care if you're religious or not. I'm not necessarily religious, but I think I'm a very spiritual person. And when I receive gifts like that. I'm like, and, and God blessed us on that scene. And here's the thing in that scene, our brother, our late brother, Chad Bozeman, he's playing a ghost in that scene. He's come back to forgive Paul for accidentally killing him. In an act of friendly fire, that the fact that Paul's character did that, that has been a burden on him from that very moment, even though it was 40 years later. And Chadwick's character, Storm Nolan, is coming back to saying, I forgive you. You got me good. <laughs> but I forgive you. Here's a key thing. And I haven't told this anybody. While we were getting ready to set up, I, I whispered in Chadwick's ear, I want you to say, God is love and love is God. That was not scripted. I've never, and you're getting a treat right there. Uh, uh, I, I love it. I'm learning so much more about I you, man. Never, I love that you embrace these little like happenstances gotcha. and just, yeah. I ne and also, you know, I never said this ever till just now the cameras were rolling and before i said action this and, and this is a shot where we're shooting over chadwick's shoulder and the camera's on daryl's face i just said i whispered god is love love is god and the way he delivered that that was a very sp also that was chadwick's first day First day. That was his first scene. He came later. Yeah. We were six weeks into the shoot already. That was his first. I mean, he had been there already for like a week for boot, for boot camp. But yeah. in front of the camera, that was our brother's first day. Is there any advice that you would give no budget filmmakers to be more embracing of like these happenstances or like these happy accidents that happen on set right. or just to be yeah. better prepared? Now, everything I've said is my own opinion. So I just want to state that. I think that these things I've been talking about, these gifts, these blessings, only happen when you've done your homework, when you're prepared. If you're out there fucking around, don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're not gonna get blessed. The, the magical moments aren't gonna happen. But when you do your homework, when you roll up your sleeves and you're ready to do work and you're doing this because you love it and you feel this is your motherfucking calling to be a motherfucking filmmaker, that's when you get blushed. But if you're <laughs> fucking around, half-stepping, you ain't gonna get that blessing. That Word is bond on that. Word, that's a fact. Oh, oh, and also, I want, I know we're doing this for a movie, uh, for the magazine, but as a young filmmaker, I hope that you took what I said to heart and apply it in, the, in your next endeavor. Oh, you, you literally took my last lines to my video series. I appreciate you. And, and, and I'm looking out for you, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, a tenure professor in when you grad film school. So I love to teach. I love I've to been, learn. I've been at NYU 17 years. Chloe, she's one of my students. No man's land. Shaka King. Judas and the Black Messiah, one of my students. So, oh, I want to say, I'm not that I was their only teacher. I'm not the only teacher, but I still feel proud about what they've done. And also, you know, they're in the Oscar race. So, you know, 
I come from a long line of educators. So I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Pleasure. And, and I think and it, everybody who's listening to my series really wants to learn more as much as they can about filmmaking. You got to. And my I, man. Now, what word are we taking out of vocabulary? Assume. Get no, rid of no, it. I'm, those, I'm, you can't say it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I won't say it ever again. Oh. I promise. Yeah, Thank you. Bye.